Uh, now I would give uh, space to Anna and to Slavomir if they can present their project and then we can discuss. Thank you. So, so I will um, share Hello, my screen. Uh, yes. Okay. Hello. It's can you see my screen? Okay. Ah, sorry. <laughs> so um fire, new conservation strategies for artworks containing fire on the example of selected works by Vodesav Hasher exhibited in museum interiors. Yes, fire has a, a companion humanity since the beginning. It's like the playing with shadows cast on cave walls. It was among the first experiments with moving images. The uh, power and magic of fire symbolism in uh, life and art require no uh, further explanation. This medium was especially beloved by uh, Władysław Hasia, a rebellious avant-garde figure of Polish 20th century art. Podysov Hasior, born in Nowy Sącz, spent most of his life in Zakopane, teaching young pupils of Antoni Kenner's school and creating outstanding assemblages. He is often compared to Robert Rauschenberg and called a representative of Polish pop art. He gained popularity by shocking the viewer, brutally tearing him out of his visual habits. He evoked a discourse in the meaning of art, going far beyond the adopted aesthetic framework or the so-called good taste. That's why his artworks are the important heritage worth saving for next, next gener generations. Of course, it's impossible to capture the colorful life of fashion in such a short uh, summary. He was an extraordinary figure uh, arousing extreme emotions, but uh, that was uh, probably precisely uh, his intention. One must uh, be said, his art left no one in the field. Fire is to warn, Oi! <laughs> fire is to hurt. Nothing ignites the imagination like fire. This quote allows us to understand uh, the role of fire for the artists. And this list shows uh, the most important Hashel's artworks uh, uh, featuring fire, intended for both outdoors and indoors exhibition. Some of them will be further analyzed in this presentation. Uh, utilizing fire in artistic creation naturally evokes outdoor settings. Such works became a short of signature of, uh, for the artists, often as uh, in Szczecin or Koszalin, on a massive scale, serving as a new landmark in the uh, city space. Uh, here we present an archive photo of a burning for the executed by the uh, Fearing Squad created in 1966 in uh, Gabesonge. This monument, now situated in Wrocław, last officially lit up in uh, 2003 for All Science Day, only one lecture at the Wrocław Academy of Fine Arts used to occasionally organize with students an illegal lighting event to briefly restore its original significance. As you can see, it doesn't have the same um... <laughs> Uh, the same expression right now, without fire. Painting with fire using night as the backdrop, a terrain shape in uh, correlation with the creator's intentions. Heifel's uh, actions have and continue to evoke strong emotions during the day. The monuments appear uh, somewhat less predatory. So it can be said that his uh, sculptures have two faces, two models, of exhibition. I am driven by the desire to recreate a very rich semantic layer of fire, sacred, mythical, poetic. Fire in a work of art is not 
and at least should never be a tribal phenomenon without exceptionally deep justification. I am trying to avoid any suspicions that in my works it fulfills a decorative or spectacular function. It must be a dramatic fire, one whose first name is Element. Let's see some indoors for sandwiches. Black landscape, also called for the children of Zamojszczyzna in the times of the Second World War, is one of the most well-known Bodyslav Hasior's assemblages. This is one of the rare cases of the artwork presented with the actual burning candles, not only in the past, but till this day, mostly in Władysław Hasior's gallery in Zakopane and occasionally on contemporary exhibitions in other museums. This curator decision is not without downfalls. Recently, it led to partial damage of the artwork due to the constant exchange of candles, as well as the fire burning the upper part of the stroll's interior. Last year, it was researched and restored in our University Department of Conservation and Restoration of Modern and Contemporary Art. This wax piece has also experienced um, a fire accident, but it happened during the life of the artist. Currently, the way it is exhibited has been completely altered. Władysław Hasior decided to put it on the destroyed, um, destroyed sculpture in the glass coffin, surrounded by burning candles, and to change its title to Niobe from the Black Conflagration. This way, the suffering of the mythical Niobe came to an end, and her exhausted, martyred body was put into grave. As the uh, artist said himself, a candle in a man's hand provokes us to notice that with the help of this slide, we are looking for another person. The same candle placed on the table is only a weak idea for lighting the apartment during a power cut, although it can also be associated with expectation. The same candle put into the name day cake will be a sign of a passage of time. Then, transferred to the grass of the grave, it gives completely different emotions. Let's take it from the grave, put it on the Christmas tree, and it radiates joy and hope again. This is the same flame all the time. Noticing the richness of meanings falling within a specific phenomenon is the duty of a visual artist working in various matters. And having this quote in mind, let's see how the assemblages is presented nowadays. As you can see, the lack of candles, even those uh, snuffed out, again uh, changes the expression and meaning of the artwork. The works presented here and on next slide are exhibited with extinguished candles. The complete appearance was carefully considered during the preparation of the exhibition catalog, allowing visitors to at least partial insight into the artist's intentions. The decision to forego the use of candles in the exhibition was dictated, of course, by safety considerations. Sim similarly to the previous work, only the catalog shows the artist's original intent with burning candles. This presentation is a part of the PhD project regarding the collection of the artist assemblages from the National Museum in Poznań, encompassing extensive uh, research work, including the recognition of conservation issues and the preparation of work programs and guidelines regarding safely uh, associ associated with the storage and exhibition. This collection of 13 objects with diverse technical structures serve as a good representation of the artist's work. Poor preservation conditions was the reason for exhibiting only one object from the entire collection, embroidery of character. The remaining 12 pieces have been stored in museum warehouses for many years. One of the goals of the ongoing project is to enable these mentioned works to return to exhibition halls.
Some of the assemblages are currently undergoing conservation efforts and will be included in the comprehensive exhibition of Hashur at the Warsaw Royal Castle in the, this year in June. Three artworks from the Posden collection will be analyzed in the uh, presentation. Framed of a hero, Sebastian, and for uh, the executed by the fearing squad. Fragment of a hero will start here. And in this work, Hashor combined the titular hero, the upper part of the composition, made of wire, iron elements, nails, glass, and many other materials with a symboling pile. There are two levels of the fairy trice and seven knights, a synonym of danger. Originally, the third element was a fireproof uh, background, presently zinc-plated metal sheet. Here we see the photo from the Tatra Museum in Zakopane, showing an early version of the artwork, with only one knife, background, and early color scheme of the table. Presently, the artist later decided to merge the color of the lower part of the work and painted this table structure black. Additionally, four more knives were added. This was significant in this photo, although, is that we can see the complete work with fire. On the cover of the uh, 2090 exhibition catalog from the Mazovian Museum Watts, several burning elements were graphically added to demonstrate the artist's uh, intent. Of course, the uh, artwork was deprived uh, of uh, its uh, proper context uh, at the exhibition, meaning uh, present without fire, not uh, without a reason. As we can see, the use of open fire in the past caused a partial melting of the plastic knife handle. And here we go to the next um, piece. Sebastian, here we see flames emerging from the iron placed in the middle of the sculpture. Sebastian is an example of the artist's own technique, which he himself called the technique of exhumation. It consisted in creating a form of a sculpture directly in the ground, placing their thick metal bars, uh, which are the construction of the sculpture, and pouring concrete over it. After it had solidified, the sculpture was pulled out of the ground like a resurrected body, dirty, full of bands and deformed furrows of the earth. Also, some of the previously presented monuments were created in this technique. The artwork from the Poznań collection is a continuation of this concept, but with intention for the indoors exhibition. The shape of the sculpture refers to the human figure with a stone as a bowed head, with raised arms and one leg ended with a shoe. There is a hole in the center of the chest where a charcoal or iron was placed. Not only the iron is burning here, but also the entire side of the Sebastian, as we see in the art studio, which was at the same time his home. So we have a dog here also, <laughs> not, not minding the fire behind him. Due to various issues associated with the sculpture, its weight, size, construction, it uh, was and still is occasionally presented not only without fire, but also in a lying position completely uh, contrary to Hashar's artistic intention and deprived of its original expression. The work dates back to 1962 and is beautifully described in Andrzej Banach's monography. Presently, the artwork uh, exhibits numerous signs of combustion residue, corrosion, sticks, and discoloration. Elements that we might typically perceive as damage and attempt to remove them. However, understanding the history and purpose of the object, we recognize that all these elements require preservation or even consolidation. And the case of the last, uh, on the two first two artworks, despite the museum limited documentation, it was well known that these assemblages incorporated fire. However, with the third one, for the executed by firing squad, 
from 1962, no one even suspected it. Only after a thorough archive research at the Władysław Hasior's gallery of Tatra Museum in Zakopane, it was revealed that fire was originally incorporated also in this piece. Time has blurred the artist's original intentions and changed context. Fortunately, not irreversibly. Once again, we visit the artist's studio. On the left side, we see the work uh, for the executed by the uh, firing squad with burning candles. Logical. Currently, there are no remaining uh, tracks uh, of past fire usage on uh, the artwork, possibly due to the previous conservation efforts and uh, uh, mis uh, in misinterpretation of the original elements of uh, the assemblage. Here we present some proposi propositions for the solutions of these specific assemblages. So with Fragment of a Hero, there is no certainty about the fuel the author used for the tanks placed in the lower part of the composition. It is known that the flame size was regulated by the length of the wicks. So after checking the tank's tightness, selecting the appropriate fuel and obtaining a calm flame, a photographic and film documentation can be prepared, serving as a complement to, to the exhibition. In the case of Sebastian, the type of flame we see in the photograph may cause some uh, significant threat. One solution could be careful arrangement of the exhibition space, allowing periodic darkening and the use of fire projection displayed on Sebastian's torso. In the case of the executed by the firing squad, we can see two solutions. One would be the compl uh, completion of missing elements, I mean candles, uh, and exhibition of the artwork with extinguished candles, just suggesting the author's concept. Or recreating the complete composition with burning candles, uh, ensuring safety, and this way creation of documentation enabling supplementary presentation using other media. And here are some conclusions of uh, our presentation. So firstly, comprehensive query, uh, queries are necessary, enabling the correct method of preservation, especially in case of modern art. Artworks without fire lose their authenticity and also uh, alter their cultural uh, context. Also, some fire artworks may undergo self-destruction due to solutions employed by the artist, as well as human actions. I think the right meter of uh, exhibition can be extremely challenging and it will uh, likely have an individual character. In some cases, modern technologies can be helpful. In others, accompanying documentation will be useful. It's important to consider solutions that the author preferred. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, with saying that, we would like to um, thank you uh, for your kind, uh, kind attention. Thank you very much again. Very nice person. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe I'll, uh, well, we should have a discussion now. So uh, I think uh, Dunia already posted one question and there are probably much more uh, somewhere in the space and in your head. So I <laughs> give uh, Dunia first chance to ask and then we can follow. Yes, I, I was uh, I was asking Maya uh, if she, if we could circle back to the last slide that you had. Was that the, the research of different uh, varnishes or consultants on uh, bones under UV or or? Uh, no, 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 no. That was uh, the U, the UV uh, photo. Okay, I can uh, I will share it uh, because it is uh, quite interesting. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh... Uh, the yeah the um the photo the UV photo of the, the, the whole painting right the, the one in the upper right corner yes that's the fluorescence of pigments and uh dyes synthetic okay ones. okay because if if it was my pick I would immediately guess on something like shellac type 
<laughs> no, it's not. It's not shellac. Yeah, I was. I was guessing. Yellow. Guessing as well. It's not shellac. It's um. It's synthetic. Uh, either pigment or dye. I don't know yet. Uh, which is uh, like the whole the the whole canvas is um covered with it as as you can see because it uh, also um comes through the uh the the, the paint layer which is on it. Uh, mm -hmm. And it has uh, such a strong flower sense that it's also should be called like a uh, luminophore. I don't know if it, that's that's the right the right word in English, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, it's even hard to uh, make photographs uh, of the samples under the microscope in UV light because the flower sense is so strong that we cannot different uh, the, um, the layers because. Uh, you know, it's it's like a fire. It's like a fire in Hashtag's work. Uh, so it's very interesting. And I am hoping to uh, discover more details soon. So maybe my next presentation somewhere on the conference will be about it. But yeah, it is, uh, it is very interesting. That sounds really great. We actually have something similar in our collection from uh, Peshanek. Uh, pravilo, uh, Ampere Pravilo Pravi Ruke, the Ampere um, um, uh, Pravidlo, <laughs> help me, guys. <laughs> claro. <laughs> rule, claro. Rule, rule. Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> rule of the right hand, and it's supposed to be exhibited actually in the UV light. Oh, and okay. That's the, the fluorescence really, really shining out, and it's really, really. Um, yeah, yeah. I know, I know the case. The, the case is like this. This is not the case, but the observation of Stern's works in UV. Uh, it's really fascinating. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your answer. And then, then I was uh, going further to Clara, or going back to Clara. We we didn't ask you any questions about your presentation. So, what are the three or five questions that you would ask maybe Beran if you had uh, the opportunity to do so uh, about his technique or or thinking process or uh, whatever you think that uh, that he should be asked. The first, actually, I should have prepared them because I have passed two weeks on thinking but if i uh, should uh, focus just on uh, three or five the first uh, which came to my mind is about the uh, the framing and uh, maybe also the the, the glass as uh, as is present in the vitrine because i have the feeling from the installation that he he like uh, push the the viewer go as close as you can uh, to feel the structure to even maybe smell and but uh, it's a bit like across the museum standards so uh, this I would really like to be uh, uh, said and to be like marked to everybody can uh, can read and know because uh, yeah, we, uh, as, a, as a conservators we also have to find the kind of compromises but uh, the, the border is very, very tiny. And sometimes uh, I think we should, uh, as I am a conservator saying this, we should uh, let the the public go to feel. Uh, not touch, of course, uh, you look by your eyes, but uh, yeah, go as, go close to get, to get the, the to yes. somehow to get in. Yeah. Uh, so it would be about the framing or glass or how to, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is his opinion about kind of vitrine? Because then it's a bit different. Yeah, it pushed the artwork uh, somehow else. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We often we often provide haptic. Uh, uh, haptic areas for children, but I think in in case of Beran, I think he would enjoy it actually to have pieces of art where where you have the visitors just like going around and touching everything and just uh, just enjoying the space. If I can add something to Clara's presentation, um, because uh, when I was um, making making a query in National Museum in Poznan, uh, they actually have or had a system of um, asking like uh, some kind of uh, quest questions like sheets with with basic questions mm -hmm. to the artists when they were acquiring uh, the uh, artworks in 60s 70s and 80s and maybe mm -hmm. 90s as well uh, and i had the chance uh, to look at the 
uh, at the questionnaire uh, filled by Stern, and uh, he was not like very serious about filling this thing, because he he, he wrote something like, uh, yeah, the 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 glue, the uh, some glue, some paints. Uh, there was there were there were not much details in it, and uh, so we still have to research it. So not I I have a feeling that first of all the um, artist may not be prone to share his uh, technological um, technological uh, mysteries. And the other thing is uh, even uh, if an artist uh, is prone to share, um, modern artists are using uh, modern materials which uh, they don't know the composition of. So um, if we don't uh, examine them, we will not know it as well. So. That's that's the problem with, of course, it is very noble and 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 can be helpful in many uh, many instances, but in some it fails, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah I could uh, could I maybe just uh, jump over to Anna and Cecilia, uh, uh, Anna Cecilia, to to ask about uh, the questions about the fire. We I only. On top of my mind, I have just Dokupil, which was painting with fire uh, that I can that I, I can imagine uh, uh, restoring. But uh, what are your uh, opinions about the restoration? How how far would you go to restore or to present the works of art that you presented to us? Like, would you would you uh, put back the candles, light them, or would you not do it? Would you do the copies, or what is your point of view? Uh, for sure, uh, for me, it's important that the audience of the of the uh, this uh, sculpture, these assemblages, will know that originally uh, the fire was intended for the, for these artworks. So uh, for me, when they are presented like uh, this um, Nyobe in the black. Conf um, um, without any, any traces of the original uh, candles that Hashur intended for them. Um, this is a big mis mistake of the exhibition. Like they should have this, um, at least uh, the viewer should um, have like an idea that there could be fire and that um, that they could fire the imagination like of the viewer like they, we could imagine this fire so this is like the, the least we, we could do and um the other step would be to have some some um, photos of the firing objects or with the like um with um, some like nicely fire artificially added, but but maybe like like the Star Mark Gallery did with, uh, they fired the, the objects in a good environment only to take photos, but uh, what for me was the mistake there that they presented the photos only in the catalog that we would have to that was uh, beautifully printed, uh, published, but it was because of it it was. Um, and not um, it was expensive so not everybody acquired it and it was not presented at the exhibition so not many people saw it actually for example like i acquired the catalog like two months later so and only then i noticed how much how many pieces with fire were at the exhibition and uh, at the exhibition there were in many cases there were no traces of the original uh, fire intention so this is like the next step would be this uh, photographic or maybe um even um, uh, even film some mm -hmm. documentation showed at the exhibition uh, the other level would be to um, uh, to also show the archive photos so for example like with sebastian i would not uh, like uh, have the guts to fire it like the hasher did <laughs> right so and, and and for sure i would not have the same um Action. yes so okay. uh, at least to present also the photo of the, uh, the the ones i showed you here in the presentation and of course, with some works, maybe it will be possible to fire the candles. Like, as I said, the one work 
is all that from the for 30 years is presented with fire when the candles uh, burning and even after the destruction and restoration it is again now presented with burning um, candles so uh, it, the bush wagon uh, the, the children yes, one yes the stroller that's it's, so like such heavy heavy impact yes, <laughs> i would is, definitely keep it burning <laughs> yes exactly exactly and that's why so uh, maybe this is the there is a way of establishing the the norm of also firing other uh, artworks uh, but this is more the question um, not only in my decision as a conservator but mostly it is a question to the people from the museum who and the owners of the of the piece and uh, how the um how the rooms are prepared for it like the um, uh, fire um it's alarms and and so on so this is like a complex problem um of the exhibition that like i can i can sh say that i can sh have a list of my propositions i can prepare the documentation i can prepare the archive photos what i found but the final decision is the curators yeah yeah and actually and that was so sorry 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 dunya no, I just wanted to ask, like, did you did you have in mind on, or reconsider maybe like artificial uh, candles? Let's call it like that. <laughs> like the uh, yes, um, yes, yes, yes. Like, uh, we want, <laughs> uh, yes, actually, we want to. Like, I saw one um, photo of one of the straws because uh, Kasia prepared like three or four of them mm -hmm. um, with artificial candles, and it looks funny, like. <laughs> There's a lot of this impact. So probably for this one, it's not really working. But for example, for the Sebastian, we are thinking of trying out the, um, the, uh, the electric candles put into the iron. And um, next week, we are preparing with some students like the small exhibition of the this artworks. And we want to try different methods for that. So I'll keep my fingers crossed. Thank you. Thank sorry, you. sorry. Now uh, Barbara can jump in. <laughs> yeah, thanks. No problem. Actually, that was my question. Also, if you discuss, and maybe also not necessarily for Dunia because we were in touch, but the question for Maya and uh, Anna Cecilia and Slavomir is actually if you were in touch with curators or if you are discussing this, because I gather that you really did the research. You studied the artist. You actually did the art historical research in some fact. And uh, this is one question. And then I was all the time thinking also regarding the Beren and so on, how important is atmosphere actually. And uh, in that case, I was kind of lucky actually, because I really could change the setting. I really could change it as I wished actually, uh, because the artist is dead, of course, but also because there were so many changes in the life of the artwork actually. And as we heard from Clara, actually, Beran himself waited for ending the life of this installation. So somehow it was present there. And I really played with the space and I wanted to rebuild the environment and the atmospheric stuff because I still believe that this aesthetic, aesthetic level, not formal, but aesthetic, like really central and emotional and so on, everything which is connected with that might be somehow adapted with um, stuff we have now. And this is also the reason why to connect this panel, which is really very much focused on a painting and something which is rebuilding the world with a new media uh, panel, uh, because there we can really see it, this kind of imaginative stuff and so on. So this is one point. And the other one, the last one was actually about this kind of, because Regal was talking about it. Uh, and that was something uh, Dunia mentioned that Beran might be open actually for touching <laughs> his work somehow. But actually we are touching it, right? With our eyes, we are not just optically somehow reconsidering it and reading it and interpreting it, but we are also touching the screen of a painting, I mean. Regal said something like that, that we have this kind of optic and haptic element in our eye. So we are somehow rebuilding also the space and this kind of central or multi-central um, uh, uh, recognition of the object as we have it. But the question was, not the comment question, was actually if you uh, contacted the curator and if you were in touch with other people around actually from the professional field. So I can start. Um, well, I was actually in contact with conservators and curators from the museum and as uh, and Stern's work as this plexiglass is important because uh, he intended to uh, to the, the viewer to see his or her reflection uh, and to see it apart from the from the artwork. And in some museum, the situation is that we 
actually see the lamps reflecting in the uh, in the artwork and that's that, that, that does not make sense right uh, so this is the thing I uh, pointed to to creators to uh, to conservators and they were uh, they were working to in order to change it to follow the uh, artist intention uh, and that's uh, that's basically the the, the, the main thing um, from my personal view, what is important, what is interesting, actually, uh, because I know the artist intention, but when I open those works uh, and I see them without the plexiglass, I am absolutely amazed because the plexiglass makes it uh, makes it smooth, um, makes the whole experience very different. And when you open it, uh, those colors, this um, uh, closeness of the of the of the material. Uh, it's uh, it's really uh, I have goosebumps right now, so uh, it's really amazing. And for for me personally, uh, it's uh, I'm very grateful that I have this opportunity. But on the other hand, I have to accept that that's not the, his his intention, and I have to follow his intention. So, and that's my case. Yeah, and on the other hand, because I also had this uh, opportunity to see. Uh, yeah, because we work together in the same department. Yeah, but yes, we so get that on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, to see them with plexi and without plexi, for me, this plexi works as a varnish. It like makes all the colors uh, more intense. So um, I was amazed with them in the way uh, meant to be intended yes but it's like um, we are amazed by different aspects of these objects like and that's and that's beautiful <laughs> yes so but about the question so um i also have contact with curators with concert with museum conservators that take uh, care of these artworks and we're working on them in the past uh also with the um, the curator of the exhibition uh, of modern art in the National Museum of Poznan. But the case with this uh, works is that they have not been exhibited for many years. And the last exhibition was the contemporary exhibition. So uh, in Płock. So it was in 2009. And it has the only the one work was exhibited all the time, the embroidery of character. But this work is very easy to show. It's just like a sculpture. Like class, more like classical sculptures, so it's 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 very powerful uh, with meaning and also easy to to present. Uh, but the other works uh, were kept in the storage for many many years, um, and they were now exhibited in the National Museum of Poznan for I don't know how long. Like they were only just shown on the uh, uh, on the contem uh, contemporary exhibitions in other museums. So of course the contemporary exhibitions are different from the um, um, uh, from the uh, huh, uh, um, ongoing uh, exhibitions in the museum. So um, the case here is that I am also here to invent uh, to to um, to um, try out how to exhibit them. This is part of my, actual. this is part of my research. So that's why we are doing this, like probably I could say more next week after the uh, start of the exhibition. Um, so, because we are preparing with, with, with students and with um, our department faculty, this, um, and this exhibition, and we will try out uh, with, each work, how to uh, how to light them, how to uh, present them, uh, what should be the surroundings, uh, also about the music uh, uh, and smell, because Hasher also was very um, like he loved to make this like performance uh, out of his exhibitions. So uh, so he also in like put the, for example, like organ music in his, at his exhibitions of some special smells. Uh, he also painted like the, in his own gallery, uh, the stairs pink. <laughs> and uh, so we take all of this into consideration, preparing this exhibition, but also, uh, and uh, trying something like Hasher like in our, um, um, uh, in this, in our environments. So uh, this is ongoing research about how to exhibit these this works.
This is perfect. It's still ongoing project, right? From one yes. exhibition to another exhibition. This is it. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you very much for that. If there is no, uh, you know, a really palpable question which should be asked right now, I would leave it for the final discussion. <laughs>